Today we're leaving Turkestan and the first impression of the city was that it's looks it looks like it's very new although it's an ancient one and it was originated uh, in first century BC but maybe there is an old part with the old buildings but uh, when you first enter the city you see a lot of uh, construction going on a lot of new buildings and malls and I don't know mosques are being built and the hotel was amazing and it's definitely recommended because the ratio the price quality ratio is amazing the bed was enormous and it the hotel was very like it was super clean and the all the personnel the staff is very hospitable very smiley and in general it was just an amazing impression definitely recommended uh, the hotel was called Silkway um, you can easily find it and actually in Turkestan there are many hotels it's a touristic place it's a touristic city and um, I have checked on this touristic map there are a lot of attractions like ancient especially ancient ones and also it's close to other cities uh, that are historically important and um, um, well what about the climate maybe one drawback about this city could be the temperature <laughs> now it's end of may and it's already super hot it, it was like 30 something i don't know maybe 32 or 30 and it feels really hot to be outside and for sure the temperature will be going up and uh, middle of June uh, and July I can't even imagine it's going to be really hot so that's probably one of the drawbacks of the city otherwise it's a really nice one uh, unlike any other city in Kazakhstan probably and um, definitely recommend it to visit and today we're going to continue our way our trip towards uh, first of all Kizilorda and then Aktobe but the thing is that the distance is very long it's uh, more than 1000 kilometers it's 1300 I guess uh, from here from Turkestan to Aktobe and um, it's hard to drive all that way without uh, taking a break, I mean without a night's sleep. So probably today we're gonna um, spend the night in this car. And later we are also going to show you a video about how this car has been DIY customized for traveling and for sleeping in the car. So. We're now driving the same toll road as yesterday, which was um, all the way to uh, Turkestan. And also, I guess it goes through the city. There is no detour. So it goes straight through the city. And now uh, to Kazilarda, we're taking the same road. And it's pretty good. Today is a bit cloudy. Yesterday, the sky was really clear and really blue. Today, we have some clouds. And the landscape, yeah, flat, boring, plain, very typical. And that's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. It's going to be the same, nothing special for at least 1,500 kilometers. So the distance from uh, Kazilarda, from Turkestan to Kazilarda and then Aktobe is uh, more than 1,000 kilometers. And there are no good hotels. The cities are really small and there are no good hotels. We have stopped now to help this guy because he needed some water. We now have gone around 100 kilometers away from Turkestan and we're moving towards Kizilarda and we now have already entered Kizilarda region and 
as you can see the scenery is even more empty there are no trees at all whatsoever and um, but the, the road is good quite good it's the air outside is really hot and it's quite windy and you can even we can even feel how the car is swinging from side to side because of the strong uh, wind outside and one tip uh, when you are going on a road trip like this one uh, when you are planning to drive long distances uh, just make sure that you have uh, some reserves of uh, water with you because that guy we just um, met on the road uh, something happened something boiled in his car and he didn't even have water so that's really essential and make sure that you have water with you when you're traveling some interesting facts about Kizilarda well the city itself is not big uh, the population of the agglomeration is uh, 300,000 people and the city stretches for more than 10 kilometers along the Sirdarya river. The average temperature in summer is um, somewhere somewhat from 26 to 29. One interesting fact about Kizilarda is that it used to be a capital. Uh, a capital of Kazakh Autonomous Republic as part of the USSR in uh, 1925 uh, there was a decision made to move the capital uh, to Kizilarda but at that time it was it had a different name later it was renamed to Kizilarda and uh, in 1927 uh, the capital was moved to Almaty an important role in the industry of the city used to play um, uh, production, manufacturing of cardboard, of pulp, of uh, clothing and textile, of uh, construction materials, but uh, a lot of um, plants have been closed until now. And uh, from the middle of 80s, uh, 1980s, um, the development, the production of oil and gas has been actively developing in this region. Two kilometers from Kizilarda, the road changed. Now it looks like this. It's only two lanes in both directions, and speed limit is um, 100. But in fact, actually, you cannot sometimes drive uh, faster than 80 because of the traffic, because of the trucks in front of you, and um, it's really hard to overcome cars in front of you because there are just two lanes here. But it's 
it's a it's a long one it runs through Kazakhstan and it's a very important one we have spent the night in the road motel because there are no cities and no actually no hotels available in this region but it's really important it's crucial to get a night's sleep before continuing the journey uh, driving long distances and uh, now we are driving past Aral Sea which is called Aral Sea but in fact technically it's um, an endorheic lake used to be the fourth um, biggest lake in the world it means that there is only an inflow into it and no outflow from the lake and uh, it is interesting uh, what has happened to the lake is that in the um, 1960s it started shrinking it started drying out and um, this started happening due to the uh, rivers that fed it. They, the rivers were, were diverted, so the water was taken from those rivers uh, to uh, water to irrigate uh, the farmlands. And the territory of this farmland is about 2 million hectares, which is a lot. So it really caused the dry out of the sea. And uh, by 2007, it dried up to 10% of its original size. And, in, and then it split into four lakes. In, 2000, in, 20, in 2014, by NASA images, it was proven that one of the basins that it's uh, split into completely dried out and now it is called um, Aralkum Desert. So the drying out of the lake uh, is called now is considered to be the, the one of the major uh, ecological problems of the planet and it caused um, a collapse of the ecosystem because the, uh, due to the uh, shortage of water, the salinity in the sea increased dramatically, which led to uh, disappearing of uh, some types of fish. Here, it's really dangerous because of the animals. They sometimes cross the road, so you have to be really attentive. Camels. Today in the morning when we left the motel, there was a traffic jam on the highway and it was caused by an accident, a car accident. And it was intense, it was really, really bad. They and this accident was caused by, I guess, a truck colliding with a car and the car was smashed completely. I don't think that there were survived people in that car. So, um, the re one of the reasons why this could happen to the animals, of course, the speed limit and um, the drivers being sleepy, not getting enough rest, there are a lot of uh, reasons, but one of the reasons is animals, like horses and cows and camels. We're now uh, moving towards Aktubia, and as soon as we reach that city, we'll have to decide, we'll need to make the decision uh, where to cross the border with Russia, because um, there are many, a few checkpoints. Uh, at the border with Russia and the situation is always different sometimes people have to you know stand in line in the queue and wait to cross the border for hours and days and sometimes it's just a few hours so that's something you also need to consider and um, be prepared for and uh, 
sometimes the road well road is actually like this all the way and it's not too bad but sometimes um, there are some problems with the surface and whenever there is a segment that is dangerous you will definitely see a sign of speed limit reduced and that is really important to um, obey and follow all the guidelines the traffic rules and speed limits because your safety is in your hands as we are driving along this segment from Kizilarda well somewhere on the way to Aktobia you have to know that there is no coverage for long distances no service whatsoever when we were driving from Almaty to Shimkent, well, sometimes it wa there was no connection, but here it's longer, on longer distances. And this car in front of us, uh, the guy, the driver, uh, said that there is no need to go to Oktobe and then to the checkpoint with uh, Russia, uh, because there is a close, uh, another one, which is not closer, but the road is better, much better, because that uh, the one that we were going to take uh, he said it's really bad uh, the condition of the road and sometimes um, you know the the shortest way is not the best way because it can be short but uh, for example there is another way through Adrao uh, to reach the border with Russia and uh, people say that the road there is like non-existent and it's even better to drive just across the field rather than take such a road. And um, so we'll probably have to ski back to Bim and um, not stay there at all. Uh, but we'll see, we're gonna follow this guy and see what happens. Uh, the speed limit here is 90, uh, but it's really hard to maintain even 90. Due to the quality of the road, even on this car, but let alone any other, any other like in front of us, and the guy is really <laughs> driving fast, trying to uh, get somewhere on time. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's the rush. And um, there, uh, it's absolutely out of question driving here at night time. Don't even try it. There is no lighting, the, uh, the road is terrible and it's really dangerous. So it's better to drive 70, 60 and... For a few hours there was no service, there was no connection whatsoever. Now we finally reached the point uh, where there was an intersection for with the alternative route towards Aktobia. But we decided to um, keep uh, driving just straight. The road is here with cracks and holes and everything and with patches so it's been fixed and mended many times it's kind of a bumpy ride that's a bumpy ride definitely so we have changed our plan and instead of going to Aktobe we're actually now following that guy on, on the car in the front of us so we're gonna drive all the way to Orsk and there is a checkpoint uh, at the border with Russia which um, he actually said that it's uh, a better point to cross the border because uh, there are no trucks there so the line can be uh, uh, shorter and it will take less time so our original plan was to go through Acta Bay and uh, there are numerous checkpoints at the border with Russia but for some reason we're following now this guy and a funny fact is that um, a funny fact is that he will be crossing the border at that checkpoint for the first time himself <laughs> and we're just hoping that he was he was pretty confident about um, he was confident about uh, 
it being a, a better option so we decided to give it a try we're getting closer to the border with Russia and we see trees finally <laughs> some trees so the, the landscape the scenery will definitely start changing um, as we're gonna keep moving towards Russia and um, hopefully there will be more trees and maybe rivers and different fields but we'll see <laughs> interesting the road here looks white we have now reached the crossroads uh, the point where we need to turn and uh, uh, slightly to the right instead of uh, taking the left turn towards Aktobe. And uh, here are different gas stations. And uh, uh, depending on the quality of uh, petrol, the consumption of fuel changes. So at some gas stations, the fuel is not uh, good. At others, it's better. So it really depends. Now we're driving uh, A22 road and uh, it looks so empty. It's not a popular route, definitely. The color of the field has changed, definitely. It looks greener and as to me personally, I have to tell you, this color is more pleasing to my eye. And the road now just feels nicer. Seems like we're approaching the entry point. We have passed the Kazakhstan part of the control point, checkpoint, and it was super quick, like 15 minutes in total, maybe everything was very easy, uh, the personnel was smiley, welcoming, and there were no cars, no trucks whatsoever, just uh, two cars, just us and our friends. That's it, we have passed also the Russian border, the Russian entry point. And um, these are the coordinates, uh, if you are interested about this checkpoint. And what I have to tell you that this checkpoint was such a surprise, because um, uh, no lines, like no cars, no trucks, uh, just us, our car, and uh, the guy who we met uh, along the way here, and he actually showed us this place. And this this checkpoint is not well known. It's not popular. Not many people know about it. So that's why it takes only 15 minutes to cross the border. That's amazing. And uh, everything was super easy. Uh, all, all people, all the personnel, the staff at the checkpoints were really welcoming, nice, friendly and it took really like, I don't know, maximum 20 minutes and the, the drawback is the road. You can see that the road, um, we don't know how many kilometers it's going to be like this. But we'll have to find out. Oh, another thing you have to know is that once you cross the border, there are no, um, there is no infrastructure like a place where you could buy an insurance or a SIM card. So all of that um, uh, you'll have to think of later. Uh, and or insurance maybe could be bought online. Yeah. So that's it. Now we need to find a spot to take a break and rest for a while well the road has changed to this now it looks like old uh, concrete blocks something like that and uh, it's better to have suitable tires for that kind of road but it's anyway
way it's better than spending hours and hours in the heat waiting in the line in the queue at the checkpoint and you know getting annoyed and irritated by people who try to um, get without standing in the light without waiting okay so we'll see how long it will be like this the bad road lasted only for around 10 kilometers so now it's like this it's not too bad and uh, it was definitely worth it going to that checkpoint the name of it uh, is Svetli I don't remember if I ever mentioned that so you definitely save time now the road is like this there is no road now <laughs> um, they are doing some construction works and therefore we have to take this detour we don't know how many kilometers but now it's been like a couple at least so if you want to drive through the checkpoint Svetle, that's something you need to be prepared for that after you cross the border with Russia you're gonna face this road um, to Orsk we are moving now uh, driving to Orsk and from the border it was 250 kilometers approximately give or take and sometimes the road was okay but now it's like this And uh, it's end of May 2023, so maybe it will change sooner or later. Русские называют дорогой то место, где собираются проехать. Может быть, перевертите даже. Russian people call a road a place where they are going to drive through. So if there is no road at all, there will be one. Там где-то есть подъезд к воде, чтобы купаться можно. We have now turned from the road towards the lake and it's a river, oh it's a river and it feels amazing. The sun is about to set and we can hear all sorts of sounds of nature, amazing. So once you cross the border, the bad road actually lasts for about 100 kilometers. And from the checkpoint um, Svetli until Dambarovsky, until well, like around 100 kilometers. And then it gets better. And then it's just really smooth, like we're driving now. Now we're moving towards Orsk because that's um, kind of a big city and uh, well if we want we can uh, spend the night in the car by the river or if we decide against it we can find easily a hotel there hey buddy hi you're so big so big, so big. I'm sorry. Tonight we are sleeping in the car and now we're in the process of making dinner. And we are now close to the river. Just by the river, by the water. <laughs> <laughs> 